For those of you who've joined in early, the webinar is about to begin in a few minutes. You can make yourself comfortable and guess what? I'd recommend you to grab a notepad and a cup of coffee. Why would I be saying that? Because we are going to be having an interesting session today on Office 365 Security and Compliance. So buckle your seat belts, get ready. And before we get started, I'd like to do a quick little audio video check, the usual AV check that we always start off the session with. So if you can hear me loud and clear, what I'm going to ask you to do is drop a message to me on the chat right now. If my audio and video is clear, just drop a message on the chat, probably say cheers on the chat and we can get started right away. Lovely. Thank you so much for the confirmation, guys. We are all set and good to go. Oh, very good morning and thank you for having taken the time to have joined me in today's webinar. This is Jay, Identity and Access Management Consultant here at Managing Gym. So first things first, for those of you who want a copy of today's webinar, all you got to do is towards the end of the session, just drop me your email address and I'll make sure that I personally email the video to you. If you need the presentation deck, do the same. I will bundle all of it up for you and send it across in one single mail. If you have any questions coming up during the course of the webinar, do not worry or do not hesitate. Feel free to shoot your questions then and there and I'm going to be available through the session to take your questions live. And maybe if I miss out one or two questions, I'm going to go ahead and have the questions answered towards the end of the session. And that's a promise. So today's session is going to be a very important one in terms of uh, administration of an IT infrastructure. Why would I say that? Microsoft's Office 365 has seen a phenomenal response in recent times. There's been the shift in terms of organizations starting to move towards the cloud based applications, so to say in this case Office 365 and this essentially gives organizations a great competitive advantage. No doubt about that. Definitely increased productivity, great, uh, you know, savings in terms of the costs and on the overall perspective of identity management and user lifecycle management. It's much more simpler to have all of these applications accessible from one single place. No doubt about that at all. But aside from just managing Office 365 or facilitating your users to be able to perform uh, application uh, related uh, you know, tasks, there are certain issues that comes up with security in terms of cloud applications. There's not much of know-how out there that gives you clarity as to what is security when it comes to uh, cloud and relevant applications like that. So uh, the idea is to get this straightforward. Uh, we are going to try and understand top five tips to get your Office 365 and security uh, done right. All right. So what have we done today? What we've done is we've kind of broken down the Australian Signal uh, Directorate's manual, which is the ISM. All right. The ISM is essentially the information security manual. And what we've done is we've kind of made it pretty clear, straightforward as to those essential pointers that you need to have in mind before you go on uh, complying or trying to comply or trying to make your Office 365 environment secure. So that is pretty much going to be the uh, idea of today's session. So what are we trying to do right here? We are trying to break down as to what are the critical components of security for Office 365. To name a few, I've got the most important ones listed right here. Through the session, I'll also be walking you through other important components and how to have them done right or how to monitor them, audit them, get them secure, all of that I'm going to be discussing. All right. We'll start off by understanding a few things. Access control is something that is absolutely critical to any application. We'll need to have a close watch on who's got what access, who's got what permission, 
how do we restrict such permissions how do we manage such permissions how do we get an alert what if i tell you i can get an real time alert whenever a new user is being added to the office 365 admin group wouldn't that be awesome a real time buzz on your mobile uh, email notification and maybe even an sms you can have such configurations in place so the criticality of these elements is something that we'll need to take into consideration because securely administering the uh, cloud application along with a close watch on what data is being transferred it could be data being transferred from uh, your applications or say for example users keep transferring confidential data over email so there has to be a provision to uh, validate what gets through to monitor what's going through and in terms of the other applications it could be teams where they try to collaborate or power bi for that matter where important organization critical confidential data gets shared all the time so it is the administrator's responsibility to ensure that say for example your one drive is audited and in terms of what industry you belong to again there are going to be new sets of complaints that you need to comply it could be probably the hipaa in terms of healthcare or pci in terms if you are dealing with credit card information and things like that so through the session what i'll be doing is giving you five tips i've broken down all these mixed them matched them and i've sorted it into five essential tips that could give you all uh, uh, you know that could give you this competitive edge that we are talking about all right so we'll be starting off by understanding as to why auditing is important what are the native limitations of office 365 uh, auditing and how are we essentially going to overcome that native difficulty we'll then go forward and talk about monitoring administrative activities so this it gets interesting most of the times and especially when it comes to cloud applications keeping track of administrative privileges is quite a bit of a challenge figuring out what the administrators are doing or in case of your talking about delegation in office 365 how do you give just enough access or just in time access and also monitor that we'll be talking about that and in terms of security how do we harden security how do we make the whole environment much more secure we'll need multi-factor authentication pretty straightforward so we'll be talking about multi-factor authentication for office 365 and going further we'll also be talking about building custom profiles for auditing so it's pretty obvious day and day out new compliance standards and regulations are coming up so what's the best approach keep it open give you the pro provision to build custom audit profiles so you can have any such auditing requirement coming up in the future but then the product is going to help you build your own audit profile say for example you would want to track log on failure and you would want to set a threshold for the log on failure you can do that say for example we've got a brute force attack in progress 10 consecutive logon failures followed by one successful logon can i set a custom audit profile for this absolutely yes so this is just one such use case it can be anything for that matter 300 different scenarios are already pre-built in the product you can build your very own scenarios as well so we'll be talking about that and finally most important one in terms of data security we'll be talking about how do we monitor file access and sharing in real time so how do we get a hang of who's accessing what data who's transferring what data and say for example we'll be talking about audit, uh, auditing access in OneDrive for business monitoring activities in terms of microsoft teams sway or power bi any of those office 365 applications so today's session is going to be a very important uh, session in terms of managing those challenges that uh, you know essentially cause your data uh, piracy or to build your data privacy confidentiality or in terms of preventing your organization from any security breach and at the same time obviously being compliant with all the it regulations that are in place so that is 
pretty much going to be the agenda for today's session and the solution that is going to be helping uh, you know us achieve this specific uh, set of compliance and security for office 365 is ad 360 and the module that's going to help us uh, is going to be office 365 manager plus let me quickly get to that for you <clears throat> All right, just give me one second. So it's going to be demo.office365managerplus.com. What am I doing right here? I'm getting to the cloud instance where we have hosted the product for you to try out. All right, I'm going to drop the URL for you on the chat and three, two, one, and there you go. So just in case if you want to get the look and feel of the product, try out and see how it works for you, you can always access demo.office365managerplus.com. Uh, pretty much all features are enabled. We've got a test environment up and running just in case if you want to try out a few features, you can always head right here and do your testing or your evaluation for that matter, all right? <clears throat> So this is going to be the solution that's going to get our problem solved, which is Office 365 security and compliance. <clears throat> there you go. So we've got a lot of graphs giving us real time insights on what's happening in the organization. We've got real time reports that are going to give you a, a, a see through or act as a provision for you to generate data or in fact, so to say, compend all of these data and give you real-time analysis on what's going on uh, in, 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 for a specific scenario. We've got such reports. So in terms of managing uh, or being able to manage users, their licenses, that's going to be possible with the solution. After you have the user accounts in place, the security of an organization is only as strong as the weakest link, which is the user. So every single action they perform can be audited. You can set up real time alerts for those actions that you think could be, uh, you know, malicious. You can do that and you can also perform real time monitoring on any of these activities for which you've set alerts or you are trying to audit. So there are going to be a bunch of things that you can do. All right, and in terms of delegation, just like I pointed out in the very beginning, you would be able to delegate securely and at the same time keep a complete tab on who's done what activity. And just in case you find someone doing malicious activities, probably adding users to the admin groups or deleting users or randomly resetting passwords, any of such malicious activity can be recorded, alerted, and in fact, access can be removed right away from uh, your mobile application that's supported as well. So we are talking about an Office 365 management reporting, monitoring uh, and alerting console all in one console. That's going to be the solution that is going to help us achieve what we want. The intended uh, purpose of this specific solution is to be able to audit and administer uh, access. So here, the first thing that we'll be dealing with is auditing users and uh, administrators accesses. So what is the intention behind this specific topic? What are we trying to do right here through the auditing? So essentially when it comes to access control, monitoring a user or an administrator's logon activity is the most critical thing that we want to see. So just like I pointed out during the initial example, I'll want to know or be able to monitor from which IP address has my administrative account been used or which user has logged on to which specific application or is there uh, you know a, a trend where there have been repeated failures in terms of an admin account and uh, log on is there an abnormal spike in the daily log on count for a specific user I can do such real time tracking and this sounds pretty complex when you hear it for the first time but then Trust me, it's absolutely simple because all of this is just one click of your pre-packaged reports ready for you. So all I need to do is just think of the right report and the, the nomenclature is so that it's self-explanatory. So if I want to talk uh, about logon activity, so here you go. All I need to do is just say logon and all those 
relevant logon activity monitoring reports or failure reports or success reports are going to pop up just like that so i'd want to find out the logon activity for a specific user so where do i go user logon activity this is going to help me pinpoint to a specific user all right in a specific tenant uh, or in a specific environment that i'm managing it's going to give me real-time insights for that specific period of time that i say and give me uh, uh, insights into the user's login into uh, the location the client ip that has been used all sorts of records can be done and I can customize it to uh, my specific requirement. I can add fields, I can uh, set filters, I can do all that. So pretty much it's going to give me all user logon activity and I can pinpoint who's logged on where. So I can do it vice versa as well. I have a client IP in mind and I want to know who all have used on that specific IP. I can do that. I have a, 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 a resource or a service being used. I can track that as well. Log on, log off right there. So let me show you a few more reports that are available in terms of user log on activity. The one that I uh, usually, uh, uh, you know, uh, suggest administrators to use is this one, the recent log on failure report. So many a times when administrators try and find out reasons they do not have clear clarity as why an account is uh, there, there's been a failure in uh, the logon and eventually what happens the accounts get locked out uh, due to multiple logon failures so you'd have a clear cut root cause analysis uh, pattern to understand what exactly is going on and what is the reason it's going to give you a clear cut reason if it's a failed password or if it's the wrong agents that's requ uh, requesting for access you can keep track of all of that it's going to give you access from which ip address who's done the logon and how it failed so you'd be able to get real-time count on such data so this insight can probably help you uh, you know stay uh, or get intruders out from your system so you can set a behavior pattern for logon analysis if administrative accounts show some malicious activity in terms of uh, exceeding the threshold you can get an alert you can make sure that such failed logons are reported immediately at high priority so this is just the beginning we are also talking about auditing requirements when it comes to auditing requirements, uh, the Australian government, when it comes to the uh, ISM especially, the authority has mentioned that the minimum number of years for which you need to audit is about seven years, which is the National Archives of Australia has laid it out very clearly that all such event logs need to be retained for a period of seven years. Okay, I have a very quick question for you. What's the default or inbuilt functionality uh, in Office 365 that's going to let you save uh, log data. The archival functionality, very obvious, easy one. The next one is the difficult one. How long does this archival function help you store log data? Okay, someone says 125 days, all right. Close enough, but then the actual period is 90 days. So 90 days is uh, almost about three months. Uh, so the idea of going on and on three months after three months, storing all those data manually is going to be really grueling. So what if I tell you the product has an inbuilt functionality where all you got to do is just specify how long you want. All you need to do is just tell the product, all right, this is how long I want it to be audited and uh, archived, and that's going to do it for you. So as a matter of fact, there's literally no cap on the time uh, for which you want it to be uh, audited and archived. Get into the archival settings and quickly say how long you want it to work. All right. <clears throat> so I'm trying to alter the archival settings right here. So do you see all the logs that are archived? Just in case if I want to restore any of that and start working with them, I can very much do that. And right here, that's let's say 10 years, which is almost like this. You wouldn't necessarily be needing this, but then I'm saying 
when it comes to compliance, your auditors tend to be strict. They'd want data for such a long period of time. There you go. Your future proof. You got all the data that's required and you said this for once and you forget about it. And whenever you need it, you can always pull up the logs. The logs can be passed. The logs are ready for uh, auditing and everything is formatted as per your requirements. So all of such reports can also be generated from the logs and it's going to be absolutely useful for you to stay compliant. All right. So the first challenge or the first tip that we uh, ha have understood is how do we monitor log on activities? How do we make sure that we keep track of who's doing what sort of activity in terms of log on? If there's a failure, how do you track it? And also, how do you audit all of these activities together and archive them for uh, compliance purposes? So that bit of the tip is done. Next one is monitoring administrative activities. So when it comes to individual applications, I do definitely want to keep track of all my Azure administrators and Exchange administrators. I'd want to know who's got what access or what role. And if they, if just in case there are members being added or removed out of security groups in office 365 again i'll want real-time reports so where do we go i will need to get into the reports so if you can see there are multiple uh, you know categories of reports that are available that are pre-built into the product so the one that i'm interested right here is reports related to azure so all i gotta do is say azure it gets quickly indexed and it's going to give me all those Azure reports. In this case, I am concerned about security. So admin activity is what I want to monitor. Pretty simple, straightforward security report. I say Azure admin activity, and this is going to give me a list of all activities that an Azure admin has performed. Has the admin created a new account? Has the admin deleted an account? Has the admin unlocked an account, disabled an account? Every single action on any principal user account or any object in the Azure Active Directory environment completely gets tracked with the event details, the success or the failure of that specific action and much more. I would be able to customize this as per my requirement. I can add more fields right here, have custom fields mapped all that you need. All right. So this is going to give me a real time insight on what activity is being performed by which administrator or which user. So that way it's going to enhance my uh, overall view or overall know how on what's happening in my environment. So this is just one bit of it. Do, do I want to track admins? Do I want to audit them now and then? Yes, absolutely. So again, I can have an audit profile from one of the pre-built audit profiles configured for me to keep track of the admin activity. All right. <clears throat> so any of these auditing that I want to perform in terms of exchange or in terms of individual applications or uh, you know it could be your office 365 uh, individual applications like Azure activity that I can uh, monitor and audit all right so here you go so I can see the Azure admin role administration so any Azure AD role administration that's being added monitor uh, altered I can be uh, in a in a position to change or in, in a position to be tracking all of that all right I can do that so change monitoring is going to be a part of this specific auditing so I'm able to see new members have been added to that specific role which is the admin role and i have the details of the users who were added so that way it's audited and if i want an alert pretty simple straightforward i can create an alert from you or in fact schedule this as a report and get it delivered in my inbox so this is going to be a best practice the product can be configured in about 30 minutes all right including all uh, configurations and uh, you know the basic ones you can you can get the product up and running and set up an audit profile in about 30 minutes so take that as a challenge have this configured the free trial the trial is available you can schedule reports and have the reports delivered to your inbox on a daily basis so you could schedule probably 10 different reports that you'd want to check every single day 
have them delivered to your inbox. Do a quick check on your way to office. Everything is done and dusted. You do not need to manually run these reports. Wait for a malicious activity to kick in. Instead, you can get alerts or scheduled reports right in your phone, right over your email as an alert or as a text notification. Absolutely up to you. So any admin level role changes, any users being added to admin level groups, tracking their activities, detecting Office 365 group membership changes, monitoring Azure and Exchange admin activities, all of that can be done. So what do I receive? In turn, I have absolute security over my administration because I am an informed administrator right now. So we were talking about monitoring administrator activities. The next obvious step. So we were all we were so long talking about auditing monitoring and alerting how do we harden security how do we make it difficult for an attacker how do we ensure that there is a system that gets the whole thing foolproofed so we will need multi-factor authentication for office 365 right? and you can very much have uh, different categories of users uh, enabled or different authentications enabled for different uh, categories of users you can do such filtering all right i'm going to show you how that works so we're talking about multi-factor authentication being enabled for select users or the entire organization i can do such modifications so when it comes to multi-factor authentication the solution supports a series of <clears throat> options you can either get the entire list of the users uploaded through a csv file for who you want to configure mfa or you can search individually and enable users uh, or enable multi-factor authentication for the user so there are provisions you can enforce enable disable and when it comes to options there you go. You can do a phone app notification. The app that we got, uh, it's available on the Play Store. It comes with a lot of cool features, not just MFA. That's just one of the features. It gives you reports. It gives you alerts. It gives you notifications, especially. The alerts are an absolutely amazing uh, feature because it gives you real-time insights on any change that's happening. The criticality gets marked, and it lets you take prompt action from uh, uh, your mobile on the go. So here you go. So you've got uh, what sort of <clears throat> whatever sort of authentication that you want to perform that's available. These attributes generally get picked from the uh, user objects, uh, you know, details. And you can further go on and specify if you want an alternate mobile number or any other uh, modification to the multi factor authentication that is going to be available. So you can select the users, select the tenant, say how the MFA needs to be configured for which user, and there you go. So, what we're doing is we are kind of extending our support to multi factor authentication. So, that is uh, some uh, insider info for you or so sneak peek. So, what we're working on is something called as adaptive authentication. So, not just the basic authentication that we've all been uh, you know familiar with not just the sms or a uh, one-time password or things like that so we're talking about an adaptive authentication methodology that is going to pick up or look for parameters uh, you know things like your IP address your usual machine from which you log in your ge Geographical location your GPS location I mean and things like that and kind of make it simple for your users in terms of authentication So if your user meets the threshold the number of authentication Levels that he or she needs to cross is going to be lesser if they uh, do not uh, meet the threshold and there seems to be some anomalous activity say for example they're logging in from a different geographical location or from a computer from which they have never logged in before then the authentication becomes stricter you can have more levels of authentication in place so things like that are being incorporated into the product and that is in the pipeline so we were talking about Office 365 security hardening with multi-factor authentication enabled for users. The next one is audit profiles. So all along, we've been exposed to the idea of reports that are available in the product. When it comes to auditing, like I've mentioned earlier, the 
solution is going to support uh, custom audit profiles that you can build. You can notify admins in case there is any activity that's going on for a specific activity. For example, let's say users whose um, accounts have been logged on, but then there's been some uh, access to a specific file that you want to monitor from a specific account, things like that. Such generic uh, or beyond generic filters can be in place. So we're talking about a list of uh, audit profiles that are pre-built in the product. I'm going to show you a few right now. So audit profiles for user objects, audit profiles for accesses, audit profiles for applications, anything that you could probably think of. So in terms of monitoring uh, or auditing data transfer, that's something that we want to do in terms of auditing who's got what access over which file or monitoring productivity of applications. I can do all of that and have them audited. <clears throat> Let's talk about auditing for one rep, all right. So we've got exchange auditing in terms of mailbox auditing. The next thing that we want to talk about is the OneDrive auditing. Let me quickly get the OneDrive up for you. There you go. We've got OneDrive right there. So when it comes to OneDrive auditing, again, in terms of security, data transfer is something that needs to be monitored and it's going to be the user's responsibility to ensure that they do not divulge any information. So there are certain things that an administrator can ensure. Say, for example, if it's email forwarding that you want to restrict, you can do such restrictions through the application. Say, for example, if you want to monitor the email usage, you can check or create your very own custom view for a specific user or for a specific condition and ensure that there is no data leak. So DLP, data loss or leak prevention can be done through the auditing and corresponding alerts that are set. So now that we are talking about OneDrive, I would want to monitor all activities that are happening in terms of the accesses right here. So there you go, I've got a set of reports available. If it's sharing that I'm talking about, I would have eyes over all sharing activities that are happening through OneDrive and I can have them audited very specifically for that said time period. I can do all of that. And if there is any anomaly or any record or any sharing that's happening beyond business hours, something strange, something fishy, I can track that and get a real time alert, all right? So what are we talking about right here? We're talking about keeping tab on applications, auditing file accesses and sharings that are happening. So I'll be able to audit all file access and sharing and see who's got what access and also monitor the productivity of other apps. I've got Microsoft Teams. I can see Microsoft uh, team events and I can have them audited as well. So when a user tries to transfer data from a system, they'll need to be definitely aware of the potential consequences of the actions that they're doing. This could probably be a data spill of some sort of sensitive or classified information. Any such malicious activity needs to be blocked, right? So how do you do that? you've got the provision to set up threshold based alerts that block activities through the management functionalities that are available. So if you want to put down a user, you could do that. If you want to remove them from a group immediately as a response, you could do that. There are multiple functionalities that are available that you can avail and have them configured. So this is not just from the security point of view, from a management standpoint of view, you've got a lot of things that you can do. User management, group management, contact, license management, all that is going to be possible. Again, from a security standpoint, delegation, like I told you, is a very important thing that we need to have in mind. So who gets what role? How do I go granular, behind, uh, much granular beyond what Office 365 can offer? So I can have help disk role configured I'm going to show you how that works. I'll try and create a new role. 
and when I try to configure a new role, you will see the granularity as to how it goes beyond Office 365 delegation. So there you go. So this gives me absolute control on any access or any security related functionality a user or a IT administrator or a help desk technician has in my Office 365 environment. It could be management, it could be auditing, all those functionalities for different applications are listed right here for usage. So we were talking about custom audit profiles. We saw how to monitor activities. We saw how delegation is important. When it comes to auditing, you can assign the audit profiles that you create to specific users. This is essentially useful when you have uh, in-house auditors or if you want to create dedicated views or dashboards for the auditors or top level management, you can very well do that from the comfort of your product, from the comfort of your user interface. You can create and delegate and let them uh, be able to view just view or if you want them to have access to modify yes that can be given as well so you can set alerts notify the admins when any of the profiles divulge from their usual behavior all right so like i pointed out earlier you would have absolute control over what's happening so to sum things up for you certain important things that the product can do beyond your native number one it can manage multiple Office 365 tenants, especially in organizations that undergo a merger or an acquisition. So this turns out to be a very big problem. How do I manage my multiple tenants? You can do it from one console. Can I do cross tenant administration? Absolutely, yes. All you need to do is get the right privileges for the right users. You can perform multiple tenants or management from Office 365 manager plus one single dashboard. In terms of reporting, there's much more. When it comes to license management, that turns out to be a very big challenge. How do I keep track of those users whose licenses are about to expire? How do I revoke licenses for those users who've been inactive? How do I assign licenses automatically when a user gets added to a group? I can do all of that through the reports and the management functionalities that are closely intertwined. Going further, like we discussed earlier, for compliance, what we've done is we've kind of put together reports, we've classified them, we've bundled them for any compliance that you would want to meet. So the next time when your auditor calls you up for a compliance requirement, you can say, use a log on activity and get hold of all details pertaining to that, send them across in a compliant uh, specific format, no problem at all. The way you want to export, you've got it. So risk management profiles are also available. So this is going to give you real time insights to help you reduce risks and, and, and compliance is also going to be a byproduct of that, all right. Profile based auditing can be set up. I showed you how that can be done. Group based auditing is an interesting functionality. So you target one specific group. Most likely it will be a service account group or a administrative level group. You can do that. And in terms of filtering, you, you're going to be having the provision to do a multi valued search pinpoint to a specific audit log and get as much as info from that specific activity or log and when it comes to going beyond native limitations, you got the provision to get granular in terms of the profile configuration. And like I pointed out, you can have alerts set for different levels of activities. You can have a severe alert set for probably a malware. So again, when it comes to data security, malwares need to be blocked right at the very beginning and before they start spreading. So the product can fetch or sense such uh, an anomaly block that and help you, uh, you know, let the relevant stakeholders know. And in case if we're talking about data piracy or data thievery or data loss, we again will be able to keep a complete tab on who's done what to files and get real time notifications. So you can stay on top of our environment with all these alerts. So thank you so much for having taken the time and joined me today. I'm available for questions right now. So today's session was on Office 365 security and compliance through AD 360 and the module was Office 365 Manager Plus.
<clears throat> I'm available for questions right now, just in case if you want uh, any specific topic to be discussed in detail, I would be more than happy to uh, walk you through. All right, I have a question from John. John asks me about user management. All right, fine. So today's session was on security and compliance, not a problem. Since the product is equipped to perform management actions as well, I can very much show you what it can do. Oh, one quick second. So we are talking about user management. So if you have active directory accounts already in your environment and you want to create Office 365 accounts for Active Directory users, that seems out to be the most common case. I can very well do a bulk user provisioning. So bulk user creation through a CSV file is going to be possible. I can very well do that. Or I can have the AD management module in place and import users from my AD management module into Office 365 Manager Plus for uh, my oh, Office 365 environment set predefined templates that are going to be uh, part of the product letting you perform you know license assignment based on departments based on roles based on uh, job titles you can do that as well so what's more to Office 365 management let me quickly show you <clears throat> So here you go. So in terms of Azure user management, you've got all of this license assignment, multi-factor authentication we already discussed. If you want to perform a bulk modification, you can very much do that. So if you want to be able to reset passwords for users, you can as well do that. And again, the mobile application also has support for this functionality inside the application. So you can reset passwords and unblock users on the go. So you're not going to get help this calls in the middle of the night to do any of this. You can do that. I hope I've answered your question in terms of user management, John. <laughs> yeah, sure, I need that. Open for more questions. Exchange auditing lovely. Let me get to that. All right, so we've got Peter with a question from exchange auditing For monitoring um, Mailboxes here you go. So the reports are pretty much Self-explanatory in terms of the nomenclature. I can just say exchange and I'm gonna get the list of all exchange reports that are available there you go exchange online users user activities admin activities the roles that are available if you're talking about mailbox reports again i can keep track of the mailbox size that's a very important thing so in in, in fact most of the users end up uh, you know using up all their quota i can have track of that if someone's <clears throat> license is expired for the mailbox i can do that <clears throat> So here you go mailbox users uh, the mailboxes that are inactive i will be able to get track of all of that so quota changes and the size changes for compliance all of that is also available this report can be audited or set as an auditing profile you can do that exchange activities can be pretty much monitored you can see who's the owner of what mailbox let me type owner and show you so here you go so I can see the groups with owners, groups without you know, owners, non-owner mailbox accesses and senders activities by non-owners. So this is a very important uh, and useful report. So you'd want to probably have the product configured and try this one out, Peter.
Thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience, guys. I hope today's session was useful. In case you have any questions, you can always write to me and I'm going to be really prompt in responding to you. So what I can probably do is in case if you want a copy of today's webinar, the video, just drop me your email address in the chat right now. And I'm going to be sending out the presentation deck and the video recording as well. Along with that, I'm also going to be bundling up a security compliance guide that I've written for Office 365 security through AD 360. So I hope that would help you, uh, you know, get set and get going in terms of security and compliance for the cloud. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Cheers to you all. You all have a great day.